Hey guys and gals, and here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Seven Mounts with the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Mice T Sylvia's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back in. I'll save the Patreon stuff for the end of the video. Anyway, alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alrighty. <clears throat> he said he feels this pressure to keep up the legacy that Herman and Lawrence left for him and to keep things afloat for you and me, but it feels like he can't reach out for help. And he even teared up a little. Gasp. I had no idea things were affecting him so much. Yeah, I was surprised too. So I'd let him get everything off his chest and we even shared a hug. Since it was almost closing time, he said he'll talk with me about it more tomorrow. And then I texted you and came here. I must look just as shocked as Felix had. So, um, how was your day? Sylvia, that's incredible! I can't believe you did all that in one day! Yeah, I was kind of surprised myself. I mean, helping out the store is one thing, but you might have helped Felix actually start to deal with his issues. Yeah, and, um, maybe I could even fix them for him, perhaps. She blushes the moment she brings it up. Wait, do you mean by hypnotizing Felix? Maybe. It probably would be tough to get him to agree to that, but it feels like it might be a possibility. The suggestion seems like an impossible ask, but I find myself objecting to it on reflex more than any considered reasons. I don't know if I just have a hammer and everything's a nail, but it seems like I really can, I can really help him. It sounds like it's working well for you, and you've heard what kind of day I've had like this. And with this power, I just feel like I'm contributing, you know? Not just work or chores and stuff. If only, if it was only that, I'd probably just use it once every month to get on top of things. But I actually feel like I have this constructive talent now. I don't think I've ever been able to help people like this before, and it feels... She bunches up some of the fabric of her sh on her skirt. Intimate, I guess. I barely move, but I hope my body language communicates an openness to her. I, um, don't really have many close friends. I thought I was friends with you, Felix, and some other people outside work, but it always felt like, uh... A little shallow. Not that I think I'm cold or anything, but I find it hard to deeply connect with people. Or maybe I just assume everyone just wants a casual, low-stakes relationship with me, so I don't push. But when I'm like this, I feel so empathetic, and when I'm in my snake form, I feel so tethered to the emotional state of the person I'm talking to. I have this direct connection with that person in their mind. I never thought I could be that close to someone else. She trails off. And you've only hypnotized one person besides yourself so far. Sylvia swallows. Right. And that's me. She nods. When I was with you in your mind, I was amazed at how welcome and at home I felt. The way you welcomed me into your consciousness meant so much to me. And also letting you do something similar with me this morning, the fact I felt so comfortable handing that trust to you felt so special. Just letting me base this version of myself on you and how it's made me feel so good. I've never felt anything like it, and all day I've been wondering what that meant for me and for us. Her shoulders and wrists shake with nervous energy. The more I thought about it, um, the, the more I thought about you and me and what we had, I mean... I lean forward and kiss her trembling lips. Aww. Wait. Music. It's music, yep. They pull tight in surprise for a second before softening and accepting my advance. I pull back and look into her eyes. Are you okay? I thought that's what you might want. Yeah! I was thinking, gosh, I'd like to kiss Margaret and hope she wants to kiss me too, and I hope she can tell that's what I want to do and... Shh. She shuts up and is visibly grateful that I stopped her rambling. Do you want to continue in the bedroom? She nods so vigorously it travels down the length of her hair. I take her hand in mine. Then let's go. I take her hand and lead her back to the bedroom. I attempt to step backwards, but she stops me. She doesn't pull me, but she doesn't pull me back, but stays but stays stone still instead. Can I make a request first? Oh, yeah, sure. I guess I probably should have asked first. It's kind of easy to get caught in the moment. What did you want? She bites her lower lip as she looks at the floor. Do you think we could, um, have some tea before we do it? Now it's my turn to be surprised. Really? Yeah, if that's okay. And you don't have to if you don't want to, but I'd like to have some if that's okay with you. You know, if you're not grossed out being with a girl who's half reptile. No, no, I don't think I would be. I'm just surprised you want to do it. Sylvia twiddles her thumbs together and just manages to make eye contact. Yeah, me too. But I just feel so confident when I'm like that. I'm so sleek and smooth and flexible and the energy it gives me is so exhilarating. Hearing her say it, hearing her say it out loud feels like a weight is lifted off of me. A weight I didn't quite know was there. Sorry if that sounds weird. No, it doesn't. I think I feel the same way. I don't know why, but inhabiting that body feels so exciting. That's honestly why I took some last night. I know I said it was just to recreate the conditions from the night before, but I think I really just wanted the cha to change, too. Her chest swells. So you'll do it with me? Yeah, let me get some started. 
Again, she prevents me from walking away. That won't be necessary. She retrieves a thermos from her purse. I kept some warm in case you said yes. Any chance of staying cool for the night shatters. Really? Yeah, or if you didn't, or if you didn't, I might have had some at home. Now that I know exactly how to turn back, I thought I might as well try some more. Another bout of bashfulness takes hold of her. I take the opportunity to retake the driver's wheel. You just couldn't wait to turn into a big back into a big beautiful snake, could you? No, I guess not. Sylvia hands me the thermos and I retrieve two cups to pour the tea into. The tea the scent hits my nostrils and nearly lifts me out of my seat. I tip the contents into my mouth and gulp down the serving at all, all at once. The sensation feels so bright, I wince as though an actual light is shining in my eyes. My insides are churning with excitement and the roiling energy of the tea. It seems to course through my veins, nerves, and every available channel in my body. She brings her own tea to her lips. She grins the whole time she drinks and she finishes almost as fast as me. Ready to head, ready to head back now? Just as soon as I ask one last thing. What's that? There's actually another reason I wanted to have the tea. I wanted to uh, use my powers before we started. Mm-hmm. You wanted to hypnotize me again? Haven't you rearranged things in my head enough? Well, I didn't want to do anything that drastic. I just wanted to... She rings her fingers together again. I was thinking about what I said earlier about not knowing if people think I'm attractive. I kind of thought it might be nice if I knew someone was telling the truth about how they see me and what they want to do with me. So, I guess I'm asking you permission if I can make it so you're totally honest tonight. The request catches me off guard. It seems like a bigger ask than it sounds on paper. I've never been compelled to be totally honest with a partner before. Not that I consider myself deceitful in bed. Sure, I've oversold a few near orgasms a few times, but what girl hasn't? Being forced to be totally candid with a lover seems like performing without a net, which makes it all the more exciting. You're sure you're comfortable with that? Sure, I think it would be really exciting to hear exactly what my partner wanted without any question about if, it, if it's what they really meant. I just really, really, really want you to tell me what to do and know that it's know that it's what you want. I can't help but laugh. I'm sorry, but that's probably the most subby use for hypnotizing someone I've ever heard. Yeah, well, I love it. I take her hand and squeeze. You think your hypno powers are working yet? Oh, um, let me check. She looks down and thinks of some method to test it. She looks up as though she's formulated the most devious plot she can imagine. Kiss me. I lean forward once again to taste her lips. A faint trace of the tea is left on them, which only makes them even sweeter. Oh, it looks like they are. Nah, that was just me doing it because I wanted to. Margaret! I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. I keep trying, okay? She looks as miffed as her current persona can allow, but warms up immediately. Okay, I'm gonna give you some commands. Don't follow them unless you're compelled to, okay? I nod, she tilts her head down, and she stares directly into my pupils. The effects haven't started yet, but I'm still struck by the piercing energy in her eyes. Margaret, raise your right hand. Nothing compels me to raise my hand except an impish desire to mess with her again. She moves on to her next command. Touch the top of your head. Again, nothing makes me move. I'm just focused on her eyes even more. The blackness of her pupils seems to grow deeper. It's like the bottom of a well that's never, sh that's never seen a shred of light. Margaret, close your eyes. Now something happens. My eyelids twitch of their own accord. I feel heavy, like I've been deprived of sleep for days, even though I was wide awake the moment before. I managed to keep them open, if just barely, but I know what it means for her next command, and I await it with eager anticipation. Margaret, please take a step back. I stumble back like a gust of wind hit me, but it isn't any physical force that pushes me, only an innate need, an innate deference to the power of Sylvia's word. She grins and steps forward. You're under my spell now, aren't you? Her words feel like a thick honey smothering my thoughts and directing my actions. Mm-hmm. Very good. Now, here are your instructions. I want you to take control tonight. You will direct our actions and request only what you truly wish. You must be truthful and direct in everything you ask for and say. Every request must be your own, must be your earnest desire, and every word must be your sincerest thought. You cannot act in any way intended to appease me or spare my feelings. I want you to take me, and you can only do so in a way true to your basest, unvarnished desires. Do you understand? The truth is as obvious as it is exciting. I do. Excellent! So tell me. So tell me what you think. I think you sound a lot smarter when you're like this. She fidgets with a mixture of pride and embarrassment. And I think I want to fuck you so bad it hurts. An excited squeal escapes her throat. I grab her hand and rush to the bedroom. What? Oh my, that is uh, quite a scene. Here, I'm going to save that right there, because I'm definitely going to be going back to that for probably thumbnail material. So I can't show any of that on YouTube, most likely. Alright. Oh yeah, let me have some water. 
Skip. Marcus' first request is, yep, okay. Or, yep, uh, you are on the hideout. Okay. Gets control back and they finish, they spend the night together. Margaret nestled in Sylvia's tail. David, right there. Uh, let me. There, save it right there. Yep. There we go. Take the show on the road. <laughs> Skin the game. Usually my bed's adequate for nights when I'm fortunate enough to have someone over. It's not a queen, but I'm short. But uh, I'm short, and as long as the other person doesn't hog the bed, I'm gen it's generally big enough for two. If Sylvia's coils hadn't been so comfortable, she would have been the biggest challenge it's faced yet. I said I was cradled in her body all night long, like I was in the smoothest, safest, ha softest hammock in the world. My neck and back have never felt better after a night's rest. Oh my. Um. I mean... I might be able to show that, considering some of the other stuff I've seen on YouTube. When I awaken, I'm treated to the sight of Sylvia's grinning face a foot away from mine. There you are, sleepyhead. Are you gonna use that? <coughs> are you gonna use that joke all the time from now on? What? You don't think it's funny when Sylvia elongates Sir S's? She sticks her tongue out and doesn't even have to lean forward an inch for it to tickle my ear and brush against my hair. Hey, that tickles! I bet it does. I wriggle to avoid her, but I'm wound too tightly in her coils. Hey, quit it! You have to say it's funny! The tip of her tongue vibrates like pluck guitar strings each time she si she sibilates, which just makes it tickle more. There you go. I am a, a little curious if I can uh, show this. I mean, nothing is really exposed. Fine, you're hilarious. I've never heard a better joke in my life. She retracts her tongue and puts an even puts on an even more smug smile. That's what I thought. I take a few moments to calm my breathing as I stare into her eyes, seeing her reptilian pupils for the first time in the morning light. They're breathtaking. But I don't want to give her too many compliments this early in the morning. Her tone makes me take a closer look at her posture. Wait, are you back to spicy apple, Sylvia? Oh, for sure. I thought I'd reset when I woke up. I haven't gotten to be with you yet in this personality. Plus, being in honey peach mode mode's kind of a drag after a while. I don't know how you do it. You mean, how do I act like that without being tired all the time? Yeah, totally. I yawn. Maybe between the two of us we can figure that out. She chuckles and I can feel the vibrations travel down the length of her tail. Hmm, it's been far too long since I've gotten to share this bed with someone. I almost miss, I almost miss, uh, miss this part more than the actual sex. Oh yeah? What parts? Probably the warmth of most of all. I sleep pretty cold, so it's always reassuring to be next to a nice warm body in the morning. And I just really like being held in the morning, when I can when I can have someone's arms around me. It feels like all my worries can't be that bad. I sigh. Sylvia grins. So, you're saying you want a hug? Sure, if you don't mind. She narrows her eyes while her chin rests on both hands. You know I'm already hugging you, right? I giggle. I guess you have more ways to do that now. Which leaves my hands free to play with you more. Like this. Oh god. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cage Silverman. Thank you all a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our Not Safe for Work contents as little as $5 already. I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye <laughs>